Worship does it, Hillsong does it. Yeah. We did it by somebody else. Oh. Yeah, she did it, remember? Um, but I knew that y'all, I thought that y'all knew it. Uh, that would be so awesome. Thank you. Okay. So, I got so stuck in my head. Cool, thank you. You guys are awesome. Yeah, awesome. Well, I'll ask her. All right. You might need to send me a How are you? Girls? Let's 
What are y'all singing here? Y'all singing here? Yeah. 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 How many days? Three days.
times you felt you could not lift your head. And all those lonely nights when you just needed prayer. Those days go by and the clouds keep rolling in. But you're not alone. Oh, you're not alone. And all those times everything you touched, they turned to gold. When there was nothing you could say, do that it is wrong. Well, these days went by. Time didn't last too long, but you're not alone. No, you're not alone. In the morning, in the evening, every day and in between. When it's raining and it's pouring, and the grass don't look so green. If your world might fall to pieces, but these troubles won't last. Just remember, brothers and sisters, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. So if you just can't seem to find the words to pray, now your broken heart does is want to hate. For he is your friend, he even knows your name. You're not alone. No, you're not alone. In the morning, in the evening, every day and in between. When it's raining and it's pouring and your grass don't look so green, your world might fall to pieces, but these stones won't last. Just remember, brothers and sisters. This to
Revelation study, the journey for the youth, and the big picture for the little ones. So, plenty to do. Uh, what I'll just give you the good news before in the first in the bulletin this morning. I think it was eight members that have joined, which is great.
Oh, gracious God, we come to you this morning asking you to be with us as we open our hearts, open our minds, feel that we are blessed to be here this morning. As we continue our journey to the cross during this Lent season, be with each of us as we repent and turn back towards you. We know that we're not alone. We know that you're with us each and every step of this way. And we thank you for that. We continue to look for your support, your love, your grace, and your companion. Lord, just help us as we turn back towards you in all that we do and in all that we say. We pray this in Christ's name. The gospel lesson this morning is from the gospel according to St. John, some very familiar uh, passages in John's gospel that we'll be reading this morning. John chapter 3, verses 1 through 18. Now, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. <clears throat> and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. <clears throat> and let us pray. <clears throat> Father, what we know not, teach us. What we have not, give us. And what we are not, kindly make us for your Son's sake. Amen. Before I begin, I, I want you to make a note that the title of this sermon is Be Born Again. Or put it maybe in easier, understandable language, be saved. So the focus essentially is that everybody everywhere needs to make sure that they are counted among the redeemed, the elect, those, are, those who are bound for the promised land. And while I wasn't going to address the need for that to be something that shouldn't be put off, it occurred to me after the events of the last three weeks, that I at least ought to mention to you at the outset that life is short. We're not guaranteed another minute in this world. So none of us knows how much time we have left to make the most important decision we'll ever make. For example, two weeks ago, we had three deaths in our church, and, and then uh, I also had one of the kids who now an adult, but in my first youth group pass away. Last week, my father, who had already had a stroke, had brain surgery. 
And everything went well until Sunday night when he was rushed back to the hospital when it looked like he was having another stroke. Thankfully, he wasn't. After a night in the hospital, they let him go home. On Wednesday night, a friend I grew up with, went to school with, played football with, died suddenly. On Thursday, my mother had a heart attack. Then on Friday, one of our, one of our churches here, most faithful and beloved volunteers, Crystal Jolly, had a head-on wreck and suffered a number of broken bones and had to undergo some surgeries to fix them. That same day, my father, who was driving to the hospital to be with my mother, even though he probably wasn't supposed to be driving, had a wreck in Greenwood. It could have been worse. Nobody was hurt, but it surely could have been worse. And then on top of it all, to top it all off, yesterday, I was on my way to Greenwood to the hospital to see Mama. My sister called and wanted me to stop by her house and pick some stuff up to take to Daddy. So I pulled in the driveway. I didn't have time. I was told him I'd be there at a certain time. So I pulled in the driveway, left my truck running, left the door open, ran inside and grabbed the stuff. I went back to the truck, threw the stuff in the passenger seat, and hit the road. About two miles down the road, I thought I was going to die. Because as I was driving along, singing along with George Strait, this is where the cowboy rides away, which now in retrospect was kind of appropriate, Something jumped from the back seat onto the console between uh, the, the front seats, and then from there, pounced into my lap. I slammed on brakes, ran halfway into the ditch, swinging and swatting and punching whatever that thing was that had just attacked me. My heart was racing. I didn't know what kind of demonic beast of the highway was loose in my truck. I threw open the door, and I jumped out, not realizing I was standing in the middle of the highway, that's when I realized what almost caused my death. It was my sister's dadgum cat. <laughs> it had gotten in the truck while I was in her house and I left my door open. I literally could have died either by a wreck or a heart attack or by being hit by a transfer truck going down the highway. What a headline that would have been. Methodist pastor, hit by bus running away from kitty cat, or, or stowaway feline causes deadly crash. Now, as bad as those are, and maybe humorous as they are, truth is there, there is a headline that none of us want to ever have written about us, and it's this. Person dies without being born again. Because as Jesus himself says in today's gospel, unless a person is born again, they cannot enter the kingdom of God. Unfortunate and uncomfortable as that is to hear, it's the truth. It's the gospel truth. We must be born again. and We must do it before we leave this life. Every one of us, we must be born again. If, that is, we want to go to heaven have eternal life in and with Jesus. It's the main point, in fact, of our gospel lesson today. Let's get to it. Uh, it's a story It begins with a guy named Nicodemus. In verse 1, we're told that there was this man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. He was a ruler of the Jews. Cut into the chase, that just means he was a big deal. He's very powerful, he's wealthy, he's someone who's greatly admired and respected, but maybe most of all, he's a Pharisee, he's an incredibly religious man. You see, Pharisees knew the scriptures inside and out because they were meticulous about keeping the law, about keeping the feasts and performing all the right rituals. From the outside, Nicodemus seemed to be good with God. And yet inside, he knew that he really wasn't. All this other stuff was just window dressing. He had this nagging question in his heart. He had money, power, prestige, this great religious knowledge and position. People saw him as a, a religious leader, but he knew in his soul he was not at peace. He appeared to be a godly person, <clears throat> but he knew something was missing. He had a lot of questions. 
Like, what will happen to me after I die? Like, for example, if a cat jumps into my lap while I'm driving my, my chariot down the road to Jerusalem, am I ready to meet my maker? Will I go to heaven when I die? And if the answer is no, how can I fix that? What can I do to be saved? Remember now, he had all this great stuff. He, he was a good man, an upright man, a religious man. But also remember that he knew the Bible, which meant that he also knew that God was a real God, a holy God, and that we humans were not holy. We humans were sinners. He also knew that there was, there is life after death, and when he and all people die, we will stand before God in judgment. What he wanted to know was, would that judgment be for him or against him? Because he didn't know. And it was killing him, pardon the pun. So one night he went to see Jesus to see what Jesus would tell him about this when he asked him the questions that were tearing him up inside. That's probably safe to assume, given his position and all that, that he thought Jesus might say, Nick, don't worry, you're a good guy. You've done well, you know a lot, you're a man of good standing in, com in the community, you're super religious, you've observed all the laws, you're a leader in the religious community, people respect you, and not only that, they like you. You deserve to go to heaven. On the other hand, if Jesus didn't say that, maybe he'd say this, Nick, listen, you've done so much for God. You've done so much that God approves of. You're way ahead of everybody else. They're just lagging behind. But there's just one or two more things you need to do. You're almost there. Just do a little more. Of course, Jesus didn't say either of those things. In fact, verse 3 tells us that before Nicodemus could even ask anything... Jesus already knew the question that was in his heart, because why? Jesus, you see, is God. So he knew what was in his heart and in his mind, like he knows what's in ours. So what Jesus actually told him was this, Nicodemus, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus expected Jesus to say, you're in, or at least you're very close. You're almost in, except what Jesus basically says was, whoa there, Nick. You're not anywhere near close. Can't you just hear a whole Nicodemus stuttering when Jesus said, but, 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 but my whole life has been, been spent reading the scriptures, uh, keeping the law, obeying the commandments, and making sure other people obeyed them. I've been a good person. I've attended worship faithfully, but Jesus says again, uh, that's all good, but there's none of it that brings you salvation. You see, you must be born again. <clears throat> now, to be honest, I think there are many Christians today who feel a lot like <clears throat> Nicodemus. I mean, every Christian I know thinks they're going to heaven. I've never done a funeral in 30 years of funerals where the dearly departed was not assumed to be going to heaven by everybody in the congregation, even if he was the scoundrel of the county. Every Christian I know thinks they're going to heaven. Just like a man named Donald, he wrote this following letter to his pastor one day after his pastor preached a sermon on this very same topic. He wrote... <clears throat> I grew up in a Christian family. My parents were Christians. My grandparents were Christians. Their parents were Christians. So I always thought that, that like, by virtue of association or, 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 or birthright or something like that, I was a Christian. So the first 40 years of my life, I told people Jesus was my Savior, and I claimed to be a Christian. 
I even believed it myself. All, 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 the, after all, I'd never done drugs. I don't get drunk. I don't even drink alcohol. I never committed murder or theft or adultery. I've never taken the Lord's name in vain. Unless I'm sick or working, I go to church almost every Sunday. Overall, I'm basically a good person. But I came to understand after that sermon that none of those things actually made me a Christian because I was not truly born again. In my heart, I think I knew that. Because I knew what Jesus once said to Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And I knew that such a thing had never happened to me. And I realized then that if, I, if it didn't, that I was not going to heaven no matter what I called myself. So what does it mean to be born again? Well, to be born again means to be born anew, born from above. It's the grace of God that comes to you when you repent of your sins and believe in Christ. It completely changes you. It makes you a new person. It's the gracious act of God through which He draws you to Jesus. The Holy Spirit draws you to Jesus, then imparts eternal life to those who believe in Him, even though they were dead in their trespasses and sins. It's a complete and total transformation, a metamorphosis, a new way of thinking, of seeing the world and living in the world. You might even call it a, a resurrection of some kind from the deadness of life lived in sin to a wonderful new life lived in the amazing grace of God. All because you turn from your sins and believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Savior, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus says to Nicodemus, with all your education and money and influence and position in the community, your re religious power, you, friend, are simply not a new creation. You may be a good person, but you're not a new person. Remember, Nicodemus, how God spoke to Ezekiel about this? You should remember because you are the teacher of the law. How when a person is born again, they're made new inside and out. Remember Ezekiel 36, 26, where the Father says, I will give you a new heart. I will put a new spirit within you. I will remove your old heart of stone and give you a new heart of flesh. A new heart, a new mind, a, a new spirit, new desire, new focus, new life. That's what it means to be born again. St. Paul later in the New Testament said it even better. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if they're born again, they are a new creation. The old has passed away and the new has come. In Galatians uh, 2.20, he, he even explains it more clearly when he says that when a person is born again, it is no longer them who live, but Christ who lives in them. In other words, once you're born again in Jesus Christ, you are simply not the same person you used to be. Jesus said, it can happen to you, Nicodemus, and it can happen today. You would simply believe in me, put your trust, all your faith and trust and hope in me. As I said earlier, I imagine a lot of people who call themselves Christians this morning in every church probably think of themselves the same way Nicodemus thought of himself. They think they're bound for the promised land. Maybe, maybe even they think they deserve to go there. They're good people. They're nice people. They're upstanding people, religious people. But Jesus sets us all straight, saying, not so fast. You've got it quite wrong. That's not it at all. You must be born again. I love what Charles Stanley once said. 
He said, you can say you're a Christian even if you don't have one ounce of changed life to prove it. But friend, if your life is no different today than it was the day before you met Jesus Christ, then you cannot call yourself a born-again Christian because you are not, which also means you are not going to spend eternity with the Lord unless that happens, unless you are born again. And then there's this one from Billy Graham that I, I think I like even more. In fact, I, I'd like to put it to you as a question this morning. Dr. Graham said, if I ask you today if you were ready to go to heaven, on what basis would you say yes? For most of us, we might say, well, I'm a good person. I belong to such and such church. I give lots of money. To, to the ministry of the church. I teach Sunday school. I'm a deacon. I, I, I'm a steward. I, I sing in the choir. I, maybe I'm even the pastor. But if the Holy Spirit has never convicted you of your sins and showed you your everlasting need for a Savior and then by grace reached down and offered you the gift of everlasting life and in that moment, if you didn't, with His help, grab hold of His hand, for dear life, let that same Holy Spirit lift you up out of sin and totally transform you, change you, turn you into someone completely new and different than you've ever been before, then you are not born again. That is the entrance requirement, Billy Graham said, for heaven. For Jesus himself said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. So do you want to go to heaven? He continued. If you do, then today is today. Now is the time for you to make your preparations. Now is the moment for you to be born again. Because no one here knows if they will ever have another opportunity. Which as difficult as that is to hear is basically the same thing I said at the outset of this sermon. We just don't know if we'll ever have this chance again. But we do have that chance right now if we would just hear and heed this good news. That God loved the world so much that He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. You see, God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world through Him might be saved. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. So today really is the day, and now really is the time, and this really is the hour because Christ our Lord is here. He is here always, but He is here in even a more special way in the sacrament of Holy Communion today. In love so great that He died for us so that we might live with Him, He is calling each and every one of us today to eternal life. He's calling us to come to Him, to believe in Him, and to be born again. One of the founders of Methodism and perhaps its greatest preacher, George Whitfield, was often criticized for preaching on being born again over and over and over. So one day another minister asked him, Sir, why is it that you so frequently preach on being born again? Whitfield's answer was simple and to the point, one that I hope we all will take to heart this morning. Sir, the minister said, why do you preach so frequently about being born again? And Whitfield replied, because you must be born again. We all must or else we shall never see the kingdom of heaven. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning we will partake in communion. Uh,
go through this roll and then come back around if you'd like to do yours as well. We'll let's have the invitation that's listed in the bulletin if you'll follow along, please. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who truly love him, who earnestly repent of their sins, who dwell in charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new and holy life, following the commandments of God. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, making you humble confessions to Almighty God. <coughs> Together, Almighty God. God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Understand and greet each other in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Because of who I am, 
But because of what you've done, not because of what I've done, but because of who you are. subjection under Christ 
and gather us together with all your saints in joy in your heavenly kingdom where we shall see you face to face through Jesus Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. The body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ given and shed for you. May they preserve your body and the soul of everlasting life. The gifts of God for his people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on you with hearts, faith, and his thanksgiving. If Miss Cindy, our director of preschool, will come and help partake in the eternal God, our loving Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which we have given yourself to us that your church might be renewed and your people might be revived. Save us from cheap words, self-deception, apathy, and indifference, O Lord. Instead, transform us. Fill us with your life. Grow and prosper the good work you have begun here. And give us the world as your inheritance for our sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll stand for our closing. Where are you now when darkness seems to end? Look up.